In this video, I'm going to be answering the most common questions that I get on a regular basis. I have gone ahead and made a list of questions over here on my second screen. And so let's go ahead and read the first question. Can you hack my girlfriend or boyfriend's Instagram, Facebook, email, or some other application? I get this all the time. And the answer is no, I cannot. That would be illegal and something you should probably not do. If you can't trust them, then that's on you. Maybe you should like be calling a counselor or something along those lines. Let's go ahead and get the first one out of the way. That one is probably the most common question that I get. So let's go ahead and check out the second question. Do you need to become a programmer before you become an ethical hacker? My answer is no. I think I've answered this in like an entire dedicated video, but my answer is no, you don't need to become a programmer. But yes, I do think it is a good idea to learn the basics of programming, at least how to read JavaScript and Python so that way you can edit scripts as you need them. So my answer is no, you don't need to become a programmer, but I do think it's a good idea. What is the fastest way to start bug bounty? Well, the fastest way that I can think of is probably just go ahead and make an account on Integrity, HackerOne, BugCrowd, or some other platform and go ahead and get started. But I don't think that's really what you're wanting. I think what the question is more likely asking is how can I start making money doing bug bounties? I think that's probably a better way to word that. And without making this video all around this one question, uh, the fastest way is gonna be go look at the OWASP top 10, pick a vulnerability that you think is interesting, study it, and then go look for it. That's probably going to be the fastest way. I think that's kind of what the question is asking. Okay, so I really like this question. Do I recommend Mac or Windows? So I really like this question because this is not really a hard one to answer. Um, I prefer Linux. And I think what the question is asking is, do I prefer a Mac or a Windows as my host computer? And in this case, I prefer Mac. I really love Mac. But since they came out with their new Apple chip, I am probably going to be buying a Windows computer next. I actually bought a new Mac and it had a lot of incompatibilities with the new Apple Silicon Valley chip. And so I actually reverted back to my old Mac, which is what I have right here and is what I use most of the time because I want to avoid the Apple Silicon Valley chip. I'm probably going to be getting Windows next. So if you don't have a computer, then I would recommend Windows. If you do have a computer, no matter what it is, I recommend just using that and getting started. And so before we move on from this question, there's something I kind of want to mention that I think a lot of people get hung up on in the tech world is we want to have the best computer, the best screens, the best mouse and keyboard and the cool setup with the fancy lights and all of that kind of stuff. And if you could see my office, I think I'll just like put up a screenshot of what my office actually looks like. And I use a computer from 2019, my screens that I use, I have two screens. They were, I think like a 200 and like 20 ish dollars each. So like I didn't buy some crazy expensive screens. Those kinds of things don't really matter to me. I think what matters is going to be your skills. Like, do you know how to use the computer that you have? And do you continue to learn rather than just having a really cool setup or anything like that? So just kind of a pet peeve of mine is when people think they have to buy all of these really cool, fancy tools and stuff in order to make it in the field, or maybe they just want to have it and they're just a gadget guy. Um, that's totally fine. But if you're wanting to go down the road of penetration testing or bug bounty hunting, just use whatever you have. You don't really need to upgrade or have any crazy, awesome tech. So with that, let's move on. How long does it take to become an ethical hacker? I actually do get this question a lot. This is probably the second most common question I get first is obviously, can you hack my boyfriend slash girlfriend? And then this one. And I think for the average person, if you do what I do, what I do when I make goals is I always set them in one year increments. And then I draw out a plan for that one year in order to reach my goal. If you set a one year time frame for your goal, and then you go ahead and make a roadmap for that one year, really, you're going to be in a really good position at the end of one year studying or practicing for like two to four hours a day, five days a week. Um, after a year, you'll be in really great shape. And this question I actually get quite a lot as well. Um, what course should I start with? Well, if you want to start in the world of bug bounty hunting, then I suggest uh, this course, whichever side it actually pops up on, it will get you started. And by the end of that course, you're gonna know 
what it is that you're interested in and how to continue on. And if you're interested in penetration testing, you can check out the Cyber Mentors course on penetration testing here on YouTube. And by the time you finish that, you're gonna know what you want to do next. So if you're wondering what course to start with, start with one of those two. And by the time you finish them, you're gonna know what you wanna do next and where you should go in order to study it. That'll get you some time to figure it out. And also you're not gonna waste your time with these courses as you're learning. Uh, this is a good one. I see this one, this one's also a lot. I keep saying that with all the questions, I guess that's why they're the most common questions. Can I get a copy of your notes? Uh, no, you cannot get a copy of my notes because my notes look a lot like my desk and they are not very organized. There's crap everywhere. I shorthand a lot of stuff. They are gonna be made specifically for me and I'm just not gonna send those out. I have thought about making a clean cut set of notes, but really you could just go out to Google and type in GitHub penetration testing notes or penetration testing checklist or bug bounty notes or bug bounty checklist. And you're gonna have a lot of notes that are really clean cut. And those will be a really great start for you because I think you need to be making your own notes as you are going through and learning and actually trying to attack different vulnerable machines. So in short, no, I'm not gonna send you a copy of my notes. Uh, that's what I would recommend you do is go to GitHub, find a set that you like that are clean and organized, and then add to them as you see fit. Okay, and I think we'll do one more. Uh, this is a, another common one. Um, what certification should I start with? And I have dedicated entire videos to this for bug bounty hunting and penetration testing, but in short, to summarize those, if you're doing bug bounty hunting, you don't need any certification. And if you're doing penetration testing, I often recommend that you do the EJPT, the PNPT, and then you build out an Active Directory lab with the Cyber Mentor. I think he has that on YouTube somewhere for free. I'll try and link them down in the description and then build an online resume. I have a video on how to build a web portfolio and make it vulnerable. And you should probably try to do at least 40 hack the box machines and make some write-ups and maybe put them on your portfolio build or your GitHub page. And then you can go ahead and start applying from there. That's kind of my recommendation. So if you have any extra questions that you would like me to answer in the future, please leave them down in the comments below and maybe we'll do something like this again. Thanks for watching.